Ladies and gentlemen, today is the 11th of March. I'm a little bit sick and feeling under the weather. I couldn't do this as a live video. I, I was going to have a panel show lined up, but unfortunately, we couldn't do that. So check this out. I got some major Arsenal news, a big boost that could help Arsenal secure the Premier League or the Champions League this season. In addition to that, there has been a massive overhaul and change with Arsenal lately in how we play and how we perform. So we're going to speak about that. And off the pitch... There has been a change that Arsenal have done that affects me personally. As a Muslim, the month of Ramadan has begun and Ramadan Kareem, Ramadan Mubarak to everybody. I hope you guys all have a blessed holy month. And with that being said, there's something that Arsenal did that just made me so proud of my club. So we're going to talk about all of this, plus the game that has me so nervous, the Porto game today. Bear with me. My, fo my voice is a little bit groggy, but we're going to get there at the end. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And of course, if you're watching this video, let me know what your score prediction is for the Porto game tomorrow. First of all, I got to say, big up to everybody watching. Thank you for watching. And what did you guys think of that beautiful performance versus Brentford? Uh, on, honestly, we ended up winning the game. And last-minute winners are much better than winning 6-0. I love the feeling of that last-minute winner. I've been to two games so far this season versus Manchester United and Brentford. And both of them had dramatic endings. Absolutely enthusiastic and so happy with that performance. Now, big up to everybody. It is the month of Ramadan, holy month of Ramadan. So thank you for, for tuning in. And also big up to everybody, all my Muslim brothers and sisters who are going to be watching this video. And even people who aren't, the month of Ramadan is the holy month in which where we fast for 30 days and we don't drink or eat water from sunset to sunrise. And at sunrise, we have a big feast, we eat, we pray, and throughout the whole month is to help us build our strength and our closeness to the religion. So for the rest of the year, we can we can go without trying our best to be good Muslims. Now, I did do a whole series on on, on what Islam, Islam is and everything to educate the, some of my subscribers. So you guys can go check that video out. I'll make sure I add, I add it to the end of the video. But before we go any further, I just want to talk about something that the club did. The club made me extremely proud today. The reason why I'm extremely proud of the club is because not only did they, did they acknowledge that there's a, this is a club that has a, a lot of different faiths uh, connected to it. So what they've done is they've added a prayer room to the Emirates Stadium. And it was and it was brought to my attention from Big Up to Santi, who also has his own YouTube channel, but he brought it to my attention. So Arsenal have introduced a multi-faith prayer room at the Emirates Stadium to allow people to have a safe place to now pray and to practice their religion while at the games. I know some people are going to get upset about this, or some people are going to be like, this is not needed. You can just pray at home, or you can pray at the mosque uh, on Holloway Road. But I think this is a massive step for the club. And I know clubs like Chelsea and other clubs have done it also. So this is a big thing. And I love the fact that Mohamed al Nani was the one to uh, to uh, uh, to announce it. And this this is a this is a big step forward for every every club. Every place should have like somewhere where, where people could pray or practice their faith or just, I think this is a nice touch for a classy club. So yeah, big up to Arsenal and big up to Mohamed al -Nani, And I love this fact that we've gotten this now. So enough about that. Well, there's also some massive news. When I say massive news, this is the biggest news that we've got in a couple of days. Arsenal Football Club have just gotten a massive boost for now until the end of the season. Ladies and gentlemen, today Mikel Arteta was speaking uh, before his press conference and talking about who's available, who's injured, who's fit, who's everything. And Arsenal today were training at the SoFi Stadium. I'm in the SoFi training ground. So I'm just going to show you. You can see here you got a lot of people training. But who's that? Is that Timber? Interesting. Who's that? Is that Tomiyasu? Yes, it is, ladies and gentlemen. Tomiyasu and Timber are both fit and available for upcoming fixtures versus Porto and Manchester City. Now, I don't know if uh, Timber is going to be playing, but they're both training. So Tomiyasu is definitely going to be available, but Timber, whew, 
Imagine Timber and Tomyasu being added to our bench. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. But yeah, Timber and Tomyasu being added to this bench, amazing squad depth. And, and this is a team that already looks a lot healthier when it comes to our squad depth and everything else. I'm loving the fact that this Arsenal team is starting to get more and more players back, ready to go for the second half of the season. And you can tell how much these games mean to us fans. You can tell how much it means to us fans just based on how the fans have been connected with the club. I feel like the connection back with the club is so strong. Just look at some of the emotions from the, from the back, uh, the win versus Brentford. But yeah, let's get into the big, big game though now. There's a big game, ladies and gentlemen. There's a big game that's got me nervous. And no, I'm not talking about the Manchester City game that's coming up in a couple of weeks' time after the international break. And no, I'm not talking about the Chelsea game that got postponed from Arsenal versus Chelsea. I'm not even talking about the title race. We'll talk about the title race in a second. I'm talking about the game versus Porto. And Porto is not going to be easy, ladies and gentlemen. This this Porto game is going to be extremely difficult. This Porto team is playing really well right now. And this is what they're expecting the lineup to be. If Leandro Trussard is not fit, I would expect Gabriel Jesus to fill in in that position on the left wing. And I think this relatively going to be a similar side. Only changes that I can see to the Arsenal team that might be made is KVR for Zinchenko. Or, or, and and uh, Mar if Martinelli is available, Martinelli's in, but he might not be. So I don't see if Trossard's not available also, then you would play Jesus in that left wing spot. As for their team, this is what their, this is what their team would look like. And this is going to be a tough game. They're going to play a tough grind it out style of football and if i show you guys their recent results this is this is this is their recent results they won 3-0 they beat their their rival benfica 5-0 they won 2-1 versus uh saint Clair. they actually drew after they beat us in the champions league and their last loss was a 3-2 loss back in the day as you can see they're either blowing teams out or they're drawing close games. The only loss was a close loss. And I don't think they're going to have, I don't think they're not going to be ready for us. They're going to have their game plan ready and it's going to be a physical battle. It's going to be a physical battle between Arsenal and, and uh, Porto. It's going to be a situation where the two teams are going to be going at it for the 90 minutes. And we're just going to have to, we're just going to have to play Similar to how we did against Brentford, we're just going to have to continue to find ways to get through. We're just going to continue to have to find ways to get through, continue to find ways to get through. We are unbeaten in our last four home games, and Porto haven't lost in their last uh, in their last six uh, matches, if I'm not mistaken. So it's going to be interesting to see what takes place from here. But my perspective, let me know your score predictions. On aggregate right now, they have a one-goal lead, so we're going to need a two-goal deficit. I don't see us keeping a clean sheet, so I'm going to go with a 3-1 Arsenal victory. I think Arsenal are going to win, and it's going to be a 3-1 Arsenal victory. This is a must-win game, ladies and gentlemen. Make that clear. Must win. We get knocked out if we don't win, so we have to win this game. And then from there, we'll see who we draw in the next round. But at this moment in time, we cannot overlook Porto. They're going to be a tough team to play against. And, and that guy who scored the goal last time, number 13, we, we, we can't let those kind of situations happen again. We need to be more resolute defensive. We need to think. We need to hold on to the ball when we have a lead. And we can't give them a chance because they could even lose the game by one goal and force overtime. <coughs> Sorry. But yeah. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. I'm done for now. I think we're going to win this game. Let me know your score predictions in the comment section before the video ends. And hopefully we beat Porto. Hopefully it's a convincing win. And hopefully we don't have to worry and have too much of a headache on the day. But I do know it's going to be a difficult one. But yeah, that's me. I'm done. Go check me out on all my socials. Ega Talks Football on TikTok, EGTV Ega on YouTube. I mean, on Twitter. And of course, don't forget to download SofaScore, the best football app out there. One of the title sponsors for the channel. You guys download that. It helps me out. So please do that. And yeah, we're out of here, people. Catch you guys on the next video, which will be tomorrow post-match. For now, I appreciate you guys watching this video. Love.